Hey guys, welcome back to the Hardware Sense channel and today I have a very exciting one coming to you. As you can see, the Yota Phone 2. I had my eye on this phone for such a long time since originally was announced back in 2014 and shortly after that was officially released in uh, kind of a, towards the end of uh, uh, the year. Um, I think right around November of 2014, so uh, a little over two years ago. Uh, that phone at the time was uh, definitely a flagship, one of those that costed a lot and a lot of money, had a great specs, uh, you saw them listed real quick in front of you. Um, for, for the time, you know, that phone was a super flagship. You know, I just purchased it for $112 from GearBest absolutely amazing deal considering the original price was 555 british pounds or 699 euros um, keep in mind and uh seven over 750 dollars um, that's about two years ago uh, this is how everything goes down with technology the prices trickle down um, yota didn't have a tons of success selling that phone uh, at that price they had a huge plans for making it global bringing it to us market but that never happened uh, so now finally we can buy it from you know sites like gear best uh, for a fraction of the price uh, one eighth of the price um, and as you can see the box is absolutely luxury you know i don't have any other phone or i haven't seen any other phone with such a great uh, box you know a lot of people would say hey what, what, what's the big deal with the box but trust me that box is really really well done high quality super luxury as you can see on um, the compartments we have the sim ejector 2 we have the headphones we have the charger and we have the usb uh, micro usb cable charger is very nice and compact uh, supports quick charge 2.0 and the yota phone um, logo on the back is actually glowing when you plug it in in the wall kind of a great effect um, again high very high high quality uh, very uh, uh, nice um, addition to the rest of the accessories um, and speaking of the accessories um, let me see what what's the the voltage here uh, five volts 1.5 amps but uh, yeah the, the most important thing is quick charge 2.0 you know it's not the latest 3.0 but even with the 2.0 you're gonna have that phone charge in less than two hours um, the USB cable is very nice and flat, high quality again, uh, nicely neatly packed in his own a little little drawer. Um, again, keep keep in mind the price when that phone came out. They really spent a lot of money on that. Even the SIM injector uh, tool pin is a little bit different than anything else. It's gonna have this rubberized uh, cover and the actual pin. Uh, it's hidden into the into the rubber and you have to squeeze it to actually pop out and so you can pull your SIM uh, card. And headphones, look at this. I mean, the phone, the headphones are really not that um, high, high quality um, sound wise. They provide a ton of different uh, adapters for, you know, different type of ears. Uh, obviously everybody has a different ears and Yota did not skimp on those. They, they provided a ton of them. The actual headphones are very, uh, well shaped again flat cable uh, speaks of quality but again the the sound quality is nothing to write home about the main thing about this phone is the back the EPD uh, screen is 4.7 inch 960 by 540 uh, pixels 16 uh, different levels of the gray uh, this is uh, you know the most unique part of that phone Yota started uh, you know with the first edition doing the same uh, main screen in the front and then they had the EPD or e-ink screen in the back uh, but this second one is just uh, just much much more refined you know speaking of the main screen it's 5 inch AMOLED screen 1080p uh, with 453 uh, PPIs a very high quality screen and you know looking at it comparing to other phones very deep blacks, you know, inky blacks, just like, you know, pretty much every other AMOLED screen. But uh, again, at the time, Yota did not um, did not shy on on putting a high quality screens. 
Uh, what else is inside? A couple of instructions. Uh, you can actually pause and see here outline the uh, specs of the phone. Uh, they're listed in the, on the quick manuals. Uh, one is in English, the other one is in Chinese. Um, kudos to them to providing different languages as well because this particular phone was for the Chinese market. Um, there were several different versions, you know, European market, Russian market. Um, they had the Chinese market as well, but uh, I will talk to you about that in a second. Um, and here is the back. I mean, when you have it turned off, it looks like it's a sticker, but this is actually the, the EPD. Um, the speaker and the microphone under the bottom alongside the plug for the micro USB. On the uh, right side of the phone, there's a power button and I appreciate that power button being at the bottom of the volume rocker. And speaking of the volume rocker, that's one of the most unique things about that uh, volume rocker is the actual SIM tray as well. Uh, you saw the little uh, hole that you can uh, plug in and uh, pull it out. On the top is 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And uh, yeah, in the back we have the eight uh, megapixel autofocus camera with uh, LED flashlight. And on the front is 2.1 megapixel front facing camera. And let's start it real quick. Uh, the kind of the, the, the slight downside is the phone comes with uh, um, Android 4.4 KitKat, but do not uh, be afraid. The actual uh, upgrade is very easy. I was a I was able to flash the phone within 30 minutes and upgrade it to uh, 5.0 Lollipop. And Yota are actually promising an upgrade to Marshmallow very very soon. Probably within a the month, they're gonna have an official um, Marshmallow upgrade for the phone and again kudos to them for supporting um, such a great phone even after two years and trying to bring out some of the the latest uh, versions of android uh, obviously as you can see 30 minutes later i have lollipop running uh, keep in mind that uh, again marshmallow is the second to last um, software version most likely we're not going to see Android 7.0, but I think with Marshmallow, this phone is still going to be great, um, despite all the other things. You know, having a, a top of the line processor for a couple years ago and two gigs of RAM, which is, you know, probably the the, be the worst of, of all the specs. If you had three, it would have been absolutely amazing, but even with two, it's great. Uh, and um, 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which again is plenty. Uh, the phone is missing SD card slot, but at the same time, you know, 32 gigs two years ago, that was plenty of storage. And to be honest with you, even today, it's not that bad, uh, considering that Nexus 5X is actually one of those phones that have two gigs of RAM, 32 gigabytes of internal storage and no SD card slot. Um, so many many different options for the EPD different covers different uh, notification um, areas uh, different uh, different wallpapers you can put a ton of information on the back and considering um, once you let's say you're running out of juice on your main battery um, on your main battery obviously just one battery but on using main, your main screen you can um, completely ignore that one and kind of mirror everything but on the back EPD screen and there uh, you can actually um, use everything else without uh, consuming a lot of energy, without um, having to, to, to struggle. Even if your phone dies completely, uh, the last image that you have will actually remain on the EPD uh, screen. And let's say this is uh, a um, boarding pass or some important list uh, that you wanted to have and preserve. Um, it will remain on that back screen and uh, you're still not gonna lose completely 100% uh, functionality on that. Um, so, as you can see, there's some of these uh, options and let's bring it outside real quick. See how the performance is on the, on the bright um, daylight. Obviously, the main advantage here is gonna go for the back EPD screen as well. Uh, that's how the EPD technology works uh, it does not emit any light but rather uh, use the light that it comes from the surrounding world uh, and then the brighter the situation is uh, the better it is going to be for you to, to see the screen um, 
going through through the uh, quickly to the menus you can see normal um, lollipop uh, ROM and it's really really uh, vanilla just a few additions by Yota they actually use the Google launcher on the phone so that phone is very close to uh, every anybody's experience to uh, Nexus phones you know minus the like I said the additions that they added for the back EPD screen uh, everything else is very familiar very stock very um, Nexus like and uh, it's pretty snappy to be honest with you even with two gigs of RAM uh, and this you know Snapdragon 801 uh, two years ago flagship it's still pretty fast uh, and uh, I'm, I'm sure you can probably use it for another year or so without really feeling the need of making a huge upgrade if you don't want to spend a lot of money or if you don't want to upgrade to something uh, really uh, high high end and high level. Uh, speaking of usability, uh, on the if you plan to use the phone in the US carriers, keep in mind that only GSM carriers are supported, AT&T, T-Mobile, uh, Cricket, uh, uh, what else we have? The um, Freedom Talk, any of the GSM carriers are supported, but up to HSPA plus uh, speeds only. There is going, there's uh, not going to, you're not going to be able to reach the LTE speeds. Uh, those radios are missing from the phone. But if you live in Europe, Asia, um, some other parts of the world, I think you'll be, you'll be definitely good. Uh, it supports all the AT bands uh, in Europe, so uh, no problem there. Again, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good to be used in the states as well. I, I tested the HSPA Plus uh, speeds. They're pretty respectful. Uh, nothing really to be um, friend, uh, being afraid of. And uh, yeah, it's uh, considering you're going to be using wireless, which this phone supports wireless AC, uh, wireless charging, NFC, a lot of a lot of the high-end features. Uh, you should be good, you know. Uh, for those uh, small moments when you're going to be outside and try to use a GPS or you know or something like that, or do some read an email, I think the HSPA will be enough. Um, let's uh, let's run a quick uh, Antutu and see how's this phone stocks today versus uh, some of the the new ones, uh, some of the uh, flagships or some of the latest processors. Uh, bear with me when I run the test. It's gonna be uh, real quick. I'm gonna skip uh, some uh, some time through the test because it's gonna take too long. Um, again, considering the phone is not a, not a today's date flagship, um, that test uh, puts a little bit of a, a little bit of a strength on that phone. But anyway, let's see what uh, what the final result will be. Uh, my prediction is probably it's gonna be right around three times less powerful than. Uh, today's flagships uh, you know snapdragon 820 and 821 uh, currently the highest uh, level processors they are a lot a lot more uh, powerful and they did a lot of uh, optimizations and modifications to those chips to to perform outstanding i mean considering two years ago 801 was considered a top level uh, processor now two years later the performance of the new ones is much much uh, more uh, speaking of the processor, uh, yep, as you can see, 51903. Uh, that's kind of like on the lower end today versus the, you know, 140,000 points from the Zook 2, which features Snapdragon 820 and 4 gigs of RAM. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's that's the results. But you know, this processor, this this particular 801 is clocked at 2.27. Uh, it's not the highest clock one like the uh, Samsung Galaxy S5, which was uh, clocked at 2.5. And the Android 330 is a little bit uh, down clocked as well. It's not the highest uh, frequency that the, Snap the, the Snapdragon on Galaxy S5 was. Yep, uh, well, that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, thank you very much for sticking with me in the channel. Um, again, hit the thumbs up if you like the video. Stay tuned. Uh, there will be a lot more coming very soon. If you're new, please subscribe. Um, like I said, a lot, lot more content is coming, a lot more exciting things, uh, believe me. Uh, you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And until next time, have a very, very good day.